Other people think they're, they're the face of the King of Miami because they've got a couple fights in the BKFC. I'm in Miami. I'm not the King of Miami. I am Miami. I represent Miami because before I got noticed or, for example, became a, a worldwide bodyguard, I wasn't. it's because of my reputation in Miami. Um, the reason I can't get, find a fight in Miami is because of my reputation in Miami. Now, reputation is only so good when you go in the ring, if you get embarrassed, you ain't such a tough guy. But I don't think I'm a tough guy. I'm just a martial artist. And I put my technique and I and I rep, rep uh, and I put in the repetition to make my technique prosper. And I walk around with that confidence. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think the King of Miami. But funny story, I actually fought George Masvidal when I was 18 years old. Wow! Oh, tell me about he, it. <laughs> this is breaking news. I Welcome to the Kingdoms Podcast, sharing the stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Wow, we are live. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, you all once again welcome to another episode of the Kingdoms Podcast. And today I am fired up and fired up. I've got with me the fighter, the entrepreneur, Sean Bam Bam. Bam. Hey. Bam. How are hey. you? Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it, boy. God bless you and everybody watching. I've seen your work and your resume. And I'm just happy to be here, man. It's an honor to be here, man. Thank you, bro, for the time. Wow. 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 Fantastic. How's life like in uh, Miami right now? Oh, it's hot. It's like, we're just, I it's, hot. Hot. it's hot. It is hot. And <laughs> I'm from Miami, but it's hot. And I would just say things are heating up in my life and in the people around me. So I'm blessed. But as the weather, ooh, it's hot. And I don't usually complain. I complain when it's cold. I'm not a cold guy, <laughs> but it's hot. Maybe we should bring it to London, you know. Hey, I need I need to go to London, or maybe back there. I passed there, but I need to go by there, man. And I, I, as I've traveled to work, so many different cultures. Like you get to learn life. Like all I know is um, Miami culture, be rough and tough. And you go other places like Colombia. The women's more nicer, more beautiful. The, the Spanish places, and you go to London. The, the the men are nicer. Like people are just nicer. I'm, I'm um I have trauma through Miami. Miami, I thought Miami is the world. Miami's not the world. Miami is an anomaly. <laughs> you get me? Miami is its own place. Miami is its own place. Uh, and I was raised here, um, so I am Miami, but it is hot. I cannot say it's not hot. Interested? <laughs> Would it be safe to say you are king of Miami? <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of fighters uh, are trying to claim that title of king of Miami, even uh. This guy with the UFC, he, he was with the UFC before. Oh, uh, George Masvidal. Yeah, George. Uh, listen, 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 like, because <laughs> we just getting into it, and I'm happy you have me here. I'm not, not going to say I'm the king of Miami because there's so many bosses in Miami, right? Mm. So, yes, Gamebred was a king in his own sense because he's doing amazing things, but then you can have a local kingpin drug dealer that he'll think he's the king. So Miami's just, and then you can have guys <laughs> the own club. It, it's just a lot, you know. Even Kobe Covington as well. Even Kobe Covington, like anybody <laughs> can say it, right? But I am Miami, and um, like these people that claim King of Miami, they did it off of face. Like for example, he did it fighting, but he made it to the UFC. Other people think they're, they're the face of the King of Miami because they have got a couple fights in the BKFC. I'm. And Miami. I'm not the king of Miami. I am Miami. I represent Miami because before I got noticed or, for example, became a, a worldwide bodyguard, I wasn't. It's because of my reputation in Miami. Um, the reason I can't get, find a fight in Miami is because of my reputation in Miami. Now, reputation is only so good when you go in the ring. If you get embarrassed, you ain't such a tough guy. But I don't think I'm a tough guy. I'm just a martial artist. And I put my technique, and I and I rep, rep uh, and I put in a repetition to make my technique prosper, and I walk around with that confidence. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think the King of Miami. But funny story, I actually fought George Masvidal when I was 18 years old. Wow, tell me about he, it. <laughs> this is breaking news. I've never even breaking told, news. I've never even told this story. Like for example, you, I know you're gonna ask me about the Bam Bam thing. I I, I, I got I interviewed with the BKFC. So I gave them a little thing, but this George uh, Game Bread Maslow story, this is um first time I ever said this. So when I was wow. younger, right, I had an older brother. I got like nine, ten. Um, I'm adopted, but I got nine or ten brothers and sisters, and I met them throughout my life, a, a few. So whatever, I went to Orlando, 
And point is, I was 18, so Maslow must have been 20, maybe a little older. I don't know. But I was there with a girl. Um, she was 17, and his friends started flirting with um with with my girlfriend at the time. Um, I'm 35 now, so we're talking over like almost 20 years ago. And wow, interesting stuff. I was with my brother at the time, and he was always wanting to play the older brother role, so he stepped in the middle. Well, basically, Masvidal's friends started flirting with my girl at the time, and my older brother, I guess, thought I needed his his help or whatever, you know. So he stepped in the middle, like, "Hey, man, she's only 16," because the girl was 16 at the time. We were in high school, or whatever. And George Masvidal got in the middle of my brother and his friend. And this is what I mean about Miami culture. Like, everything I'm about to say, I, I don't hold the grudge against him. This is what a Miami guy would do, even though we were in Orlando. He goes like, hey, no, no, I got it. I got it. He gets in the middle. My brother's here. His friend is here. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then, boom, sucker punches my brother. But now, yeah, it's a sucker punch, but it's like that in Miami. Yes. This, this is not so, BKFC. So, 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 so he's always been doing this. He did the same thing to Kobe Covington. <laughs> And that's and why I respect him because I okay, just for the record, I didn't know he was George Masvidal at the time because I probably would have ran away, but I didn't know. I just thought it was another street fight, so I go and I go get in the middle. My brother's dazed, but I think my brother's going to recuperate, so I I square off with with Masvidal's friend. He gets the better of my brother, um, drops my brother. Obviously, he's Masvidal. We didn't know this at the time, so I got to go over there. I throw a lazy punch, um. I missed, but he had long hair at the time. So he threw a punch. I moved. I grabbed his hair. I should have need him. But now thinking about it, I'm glad I didn't throw a knee. He probably would have got a single and took me down. I wasn't trained MMA um, <laughs> at, at that time. He was. I didn't know this. I found this information after. But I'm not thinking of that after he just fought my brother. Well, his friend comes, throws a punch. <laughs> so I got to duck his friend's punch, and I let go of his hair. And then they go running because obviously we don't want no problems with the cops, and they just beat somebody up. You know, I'm a street guy. I get it. But I'm 18 at the time or a young 17 high school kid. So I, I got to get revenge. So I start chasing them down through the whole. Um, they're not running from me or from fear. Because I'm real. They're not running from me from fear. They're running away to get away from the crime they just committed or the ass movie they just put on my brother. I ain't, I ain't even mad at them. But I got to go do my job. But when I follow them, I'm looking for a bat or something. They end up meeting up with 20 other guys. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, like, and then they start. This is when I was young. I wasn't. I was still. Yeah, I was younger, but they started switching shirts. So, they, like, he had a red shirt. He took it off. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm like, so they blurred into the – eventually, it was a scene. The, 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 the Orlando police came and everything. I don't know what happened, right? But that's how I found out his name was George Maslow because I was out here trying to seek revenge in Miami because I, I went – they were interviewing him, right? So, I had a girl go in there and get a picture of his ID to find his address and find everything. Remember, I don't know he's George Maslow. So that's how I got his name. And then I later found out um, who he is. And I was always like, ooh, thank God I ain't do shit because he will my ass. Now I, don't think any, now I don't think any man on the world can beat me, but it goes to paying homage. He's not afraid of me. Um, mm -hmm. I pay respect to all the people that came before me, like the Masvidal's. I, I used to look up to Kimbo. Um, the Kimbo level. Slice. Kimbo Slice. That's who I really yeah. wanted to be. Before. I think, I think Mas Masvidal was his protege. Yes. And that's how, yes. Like, and that's where I come from. I was also in those backyard fights. I just don't have footage from those. I got footage from other ones, but from those specific ones. Um, but I came up paying homage to the people that came before me. Kimball, Levels, uh, George, Yuli, and pretty much all of them, minus Game Bread, because he, he they all co-signed me on Instagram. Um, another big one is, 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 is Mike Perry. Like, these guys are the people Mike I know. Mike Perry. He's that's a, yes. Because... And, and, I know him when, since we already been going on four or five years. We've trained, and he's always been on and off the mats, a humble dude, and always wanted what's good for me. I saw when he was in another relationship, and he had a, a relationship, a new girlfriend, and he got a kid. And I, and I, so we had that bond, and we would train. Well, these guys, like, they respect me, not because I talk a lot or, or because I dye my hair or anything crazy. It's because of my skill that I put in hard work with my coach, Juan Arroyo, a Hall of Fame uh, boxer. And that's what they see and that's what they respect. And that's why they give me um, um, the green light and the co-sign to tell me, like basically when they comment or they repost anything on my Instagram, that, that's basically saying, well, this guy's legit, um, let him shine. So I appreciate all of them. But yeah, funny story, I did fight uh, George Mazzo. 
And I'm glad I didn't fight him even more because he probably would have whooped my ass. <laughs> That's the whole <laughs> truth, bro. Interesting story. Interesting story. Wow. And he, he did <laughs> knock out my brother. He did knock out my brother, like, or knock him down or whatever. Um, so I lived with that, like, for many years. And that's just the Bam Bam story. Nobody knows that. But, for example, who are the top dogs here? Uh, Mike Perry co-signs me. Yuli the Monsters, the biggest badass here. Uh, he's in the BYB. Um, he co-signs me. Like, just down the list, they all co-sign me out of respect for my craft and the training I put in with my coach. You know, not because I uh, say bad words or... Or like I said, dye my hair or tattoos are like no, it, it's about the skill and it's about the craft and it's about the respect and honor. I know it gets blurred, the, the, the lines get um blurred because I'm also a bodyguard. Now, people will come over and tell, oh, he protects six nine, he's a rat lover. Like, what? Like they're just, you get what I'm saying? Like, like so they'll they'll blur the lines like my training and my regimen and my routine doesn't matter anymore because I went to go make money for my daughter starting a business and picking up all types of clients. Six nine is just one of them. But instead of saying, wow, this guy Bam Bam took a high risk client that they want to murder that was supposedly snitched all in New York or whatever, and he's protecting him. Wow, what a danger. This guy Bam Bam got some balls. Obviously, it's hard for people that are not trying to support Bam Bam to say that. So they'll say I'm a rat lover, or I don't know what they'll say. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like mice i never had a snake so i don't even know what that means <laughs> People i don't know what that means talk. they talk they talk they talk it's like like they they, they yeah they talk bro they they talk man yeah, they, people they, they, always they, talk, right? But then uh, you know you're so enthusiastic about Miami, you know, the life there growing up. So one question I usually have to people and have on the board is what was your childhood like, you know, and what was growing up like for you? So for you, like what was it growing up in on the streets of Miami? Like I'm, I'm gonna it? tell you that's a great <laughs> question. Um and I love Miami, I love the 305, and because all right, I got a hard story, but I don't got the hardest story. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh Miami. I grew up here, um, and basically like I was adopted. Like I could make it to a Star Wars story, but it was really a blessing. My dad is an amazing man, you know what I'm saying? Just to adopt somebody is crazy. Like, I mm -hmm. can't raise no kid that I didn't have sex for. You get what I'm saying? If I didn't have sex with a woman and she got a kid, I'm not raising that kid. But my dad adopted That's me. That's a tough sacrifice. Being a That's a tough sacrifice. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I don't support no man raising nobody else's kid. That's mm -hmm. just my, even though my dad adopted me and did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I feel as a man. Regardless if I do do it, um, if I'm nice to the kid or whatnot, that's just I'm a good human being. But I don't support it. I think it's sucker shit. But it's okay. Do your life. But my dad did it. Um, and I'm blessed for it. And he did it from the bottom of his heart that even people would wonder why he, he didn't make no money. He did it from the bottom of his heart. So mm -hmm. I was adopted. He's a, He's a great man. So I have, Miami's been great to me. It made me the person I am. Like all the ups and downs, like I can't be mad. You know, you know who has a hard story? Like all my friends that come from Colombia and they, they come just hustling over here, you know, trying to make a new life. All the people that come from all these other places. Frank, Francis Nagano's got some, they all got tougher stories than me. Now, I still might think I'm tougher when time push comes to shove, but I don't walk around talking about how tough I am. But Miami could raise you to show you the reality. And in 35 years of life, Miami showed me a lot. Um, but it also showed me, like, I wish I would say, kids, stay in school, stay off drugs. I wish I would have been a doctor, but I'm not. Um, so, so I got to make You're a doctor of fighting. And, and, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I got to I gotta make it happen. And Miami showed me a lot of ways to make money. And it's why it took me to the highest pinnacles of, of the highest platforms fighting, the highest risk, highest profile clients and bodyguarding. And that's just the name too. Like at the same time, I could go cut the grass tomorrow. Like I don't have, um, like I seen people in the BKFC, they'll have three, four, five, six fights, win a couple of fights and they think they're famous. You're not famous. You've won a couple of fights. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I live in reality. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> for example, if you guys didn't fight in the BKFC, nobody would know you. If I didn't fight in the BKFC, they still know who Bam Bam is. Mm -hmm. But I don't walk around saying these things. Um, But Miami's just a great place. It's a tough place. But it'll make a man out of anybody. But we're 2024. I'll go, this place, I don't know. If you go to the, There's different types of people all over. But I love Miami, where I was raised. I was raised in a black neighborhood. Um, we had to end up moving from Carroll City because my dad found a, a, a wife. We had a kid, my brother, and we had to move out of that neighborhood because for $20, they put a gun to my mom's head. You know, that type of man. Mm -hmm. So we had to move. So these are, you know, I lived in efficiencies. Uh, all my high school um, um, ages, all my high school years with my dad. Um, so we've been grinding, man, and just Miami – Everything bad that happened to me has turned out to a positive. Um, like, for example, like, it looked bad that I liked to fight so much, but I turned into a positive. Um, like, bodyguarding, you don't get – there's not, like, a resume or an interview. You got to get put on. And especially at that level, I must have been put on bodyguarding for my work that I put in for 30-plus years in Miami, especially after 18. So, because um, when I was a kid, I was a baseball player. But from everything I've done – I guess through word of mouth, that's how I, I got put on bodyguarding and now the biggest platforms. And it's all because of, of Miami. Because without Miami, I would I would be different. You know, I've been to other places and it just, you know, people honking with that Miami traffic. Ah, ah, it'll just make you tougher. It'll just make you tougher. It'll, <laughs> it'll, ju it'll just make you tougher. It'll just make you tougher. Top life. <laughs> top life is the last stuff people do. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's, that's the truth, though. That's the truth. A lot of people, like, you can have one good year, two good years, three. It's about consistency. There's a reason I'm 35, and I fight like I'm 25. There's a reason I'm 35, and I've been doing the same thing or do whatever I want on whatever platform. And, like, like nobody – I grinded for this. You know what I'm saying? And I still don't got nothing. I still got to go to work. I went to work last night because if, if I don't have a bodyguard gig or I don't have – I got to go do Uber or something because zero dollars – you cannot make zero dollars daily. It don't matter if you make eight thousand the day before. If you make eight hundred the day before, you can't sit on zero. You can't complain. And as a man, as a hustling spirit, that and as a man, nobody's gonna give you nothing. We're not like a girl that's gonna go show a kiss or do an OnlyFans. Oh, maybe I might start an OnlyFans. Times are tough. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. But, but like as a man, as a man. For example, if a woman wants to get on a yacht, she just got to put a bikini on. If a man wants to get on a yacht, he better buy the yacht. Or as me, when I've been on the yacht with millionaires, I've been as a bodyguard. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you got to go out and get it. You got to go out and get it. Fighting. Fighting is like, like, I'm a realist. Like, these guys don't make no money off of fighting. Like, there's no real big money until you, the Mike Perry's of the world, yes. You get me? Mm -hmm. But like all the other ones, we on a grind. Um, granted, as and, and, and as far as the amateur, like over eight times, and an amateur is free. So that's for the passion of fighting. So I take time off of work to chase my dream of fighting. For example, next, I can't find an opponent in Miami. It's like everybody in Miami is petrified, right? Granted, I want to say it's not, not the OGs or the people with 10 fights. Of course, they'll fight me. You get me? But people around my level is petrified. And the people hiring me, I will fight them, but I have nothing but respect for them. I got one fight in the BKFC. Mm -hmm. I, I want two or three more to get right because I know I should be 3-0, and 4-0. Oh, and, oh, and then give me whoever, right? But in the BKFC, unless you're a tough dog, you're not making money. So you got to figure it out. These people will yeah, lie you. Yeah, you need to find a way. These people will <laughs> it's top heavy. It's top heavy. It's top, <laughs> you it's know top that. heavy. But, but the people will lie to you. And then they'll lie to me, and they'll lie to themselves. Like, they're making all cards. You ain't making no money. Um, but people, it's hard to look in the mirror. I look in the mirror, and I see what it is. Like, if I'm overweight, it's on me. If I have a girl that cheated, it's on me. If I'm broke, it's on me. If I lost a fight, it's on me. There's nobody to blame. You get what I'm saying? The only one to blame is me for everything good that I've done and everything bad. And I still got a lot more to go. Um, but, for example, in Miami, I can't find a fight. I got to... This might be another little spoiler. I'm dropping. I'm giving you spoilers. Uh, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> uh, but 
I don't like to get excited because it's happened. I, and if you look at my Instagram, I've been called. I got called out last month nine times and had nine pullouts because people Whoa. call me out and it's like, oh, I'm gonna fight Bam Bam. I think I don't know. If, I don't know if they do drugs and then they come off the drugs the next day and and regret their decision or they just get excited and like I I think their Instagram gets popping for like a day or two days when they say they're gonna fight Bam Bam, but then the reality sets in. That they gotta fight, bam, bam, <laughs> and now all of a sudden they all pulled out. So I might, I might, crossing my fingers. I'm trying to drop the weight. I'm, I'm not trying. I'm dropping the weight. Um, July 12th, I might have to go to California to fight because wow. these guys That's over here, Miami, is yeah. So I'm hoping to do that. Um, but that to prove the point that I gotta leave Miami to get a fight because I'm already. I was supposed to be February, March, June. There's no money, no fights, no money. So I gotta go figure it out. You get what I'm saying? I gotta go figure it out. My coach is not free. Training is not free. Um, granted, I fast a lot, but food is not free. I don't have no free time to go out. I don't even go out. Like I can go out every night. Um, women, women, party, party, everything. But it's not Bam Bam's thing. It might look like it on Instagram because I put a catchy song in the background. I'm just using the app. I'm at home trying to be a man by nine, and I'm trying to be up by six. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm here with my family, and but I'm not gonna put that on Instagram. You know, Instagram. Exactly, I don't know what, exactly. Like never. Instagram. I tell people never believe everything you see on social media. You know, like, never believe that. If if you if you know, like everybody thinks they know me through Instagram. I'm the one putting the information out. Mm -hmm. Like like I there's. Trust you me. See what it, I want you to see. Exactly, bro. You only see what I want you to see, man. But. It's like, so they try to use things that I put against me. Like, bro, you just falling right into the trap. If you think I put it on Instagram and I don't have a comeback for whatever, like, let's just say I put me working or I put a picture, because like I was going to tell you, next week, next month, I'm already booked to go to Romania, right? Uh, 6 9 got a show. Uh, 6 9 yeah. yeah I, so, I think I saw so, that on Instagram. <laughs> so we, we, we supposed to be out there. But you know what's funny? The fight July for uh in Cali, which I don't got the contract. They gave me the details. They should be sending the contract, but it's also July 12th. So I gotta make a decision. Do I want to go to Romania? And I mean, we already know how Bam Bam and the team gets down. The best time of my life getting paid for it. Or do I want to go put my name on the line and fight? I'm making about the same money in four days of work and in one day's of work. You know, it's about yeah. the same. So there it is. Most people will go with 6 9 and work or, or, or they'll do it for free. People will be hanging around these celebrities <laughs> for free. There is cloud free, like Bam Bam don't go out for free. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't leave my house if I don't get paid. If not, I'd rather stay here and focus on me. But most people would rather go to Romania. Me? No. And I have hope a good they time. get a contract and have a good time. But I, I'm trying to be a, a world champion. I, I need two more fights and then I'm going to try to demand the title fight maybe i'll get have to go four and oh but that's where i'm at chasing my dreams um so i'm gonna decide if the fight goes through which is looking like 90 percent to not go travel the world with romanian women and celebrities and millions of dollars and and fancy flights and all that to go fight people are not doing that people want to be me so they hate me I don't want to be me. I want to be something else. Like, I'm a fighter, but people want to label me as a bodyguard. Like, but the reality is, I'm all of those things. But I'm a fighter first. And people talk about it. So, for example, I'm going to choose to fight rather than go on, on a flight that I'm already booked. You get what I'm saying? That's called decisions. Like, I don't think people are making those decisions. You get what I'm saying? I don't think people yeah, are... Decisions. Yeah, I don't think they are. I think they'll go the easier route. Same money, same everything, but not me because I'm trying to chase a dream and I really believe in my skill. The thing about all of this, it sounds good on Instagram, the glitz, the glamour, the smoke, and the mirrors, but I really am the best fighter in the BKFC. I really believe it, um, especially wow. when it comes to just hands. So I'm trying to prove and I, it. And I want, yeah, exactly. You, you stole it off my mouth. Like, I really want to see you prove it. But, um, but, but before you get to prove it, you grew up in Miami. You had people you looked up to, right? So who are those people you looked up to, you know, growing up? And how did you get into martial arts? Okay. 
Um, like I said, my first inspiration to the martial arts world was Kimball. You know, when that that those those videos came out and Me all those, those guys. Lies. Yes. <laughs> um, that was my biggest thing. Now I was a baseball player, right? So and I was one of the best around in, in Miami. Um and you can all, you can always look these things up because if I was lying about that, I'll look stupid. I'll have to go in Miami and they'll be like, oh, you're a liar. But that's not what they say because I only speak the truth. I couldn't claim to be the best fighter or claim to be the toughest guy and then walk around the city with my health held high if it wasn't true. The thing about it is that it's true, you know. Um, so Kimbo was the first person to show me about it and get me excited, but MMA didn't exist. When I was growing up, it didn't. Now, there was boxing and there was karate. Like, the karate guys, I would already, like, beat them up in school. You know how you have middle school fights, high school fights. So, I never thought karate was anything, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the boxers, whole different thing. Um, but MMA didn't exist. But once MMA started existing, I started dabbling. And then eventually, around 2015, 2016, I really tried to take it to another level when my daughter was born. And then a couple of things happened in life that I was like, I think it's time now. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, I would say Kimbo Slice was the person I looked up to, you know what I'm saying? And then I just started looking to other people, but I really just looked up to my dad. I'm just trying to, even though I've let him down in many ways because I chose a whole different career path, which no parent would want. It's better just staying in school, you know, the whole thing, being dead. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's still, you know, I'm going to tell that to my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's still, I wouldn't wish my life on nobody just because mm -hmm. I turned it into a, a, a positive. But when you live like this, anything can happen, a little slip, and you could be back at the bottom. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's no uh, security blanket in this game. Like, for example, exactly. just, like, just like fighting, just like bodyguarding, like sometimes I got work all week, sometimes I got no work. That's the life of an entrepreneur. You might make 8,000, you might make 18,000, then you might make 800 and then you might make eight cents. You get what I'm saying? It's out of my control, the fighting thing. If an opponent pulls out, he he could wait to the week prior to the fight, get all this clout, maybe, oh, I'm going to fight Bam Bam, ooh, all this, all this, and then pull out. I don't get no money for that, you know? And then who knows what happened with my sponsors. Maybe I got to give the money back depending on my relationship with the sponsors. Bodyguarding. I've had clients, like, for example, we was going good six I could get arrested. I got another one I had when I was with Jack where they could get arrested. Like, all these artists could get arrested. Slim Jimmy, all these, all these artists can get arrested. And mm. anything could happen. So you got to find many it's ways. Not, to get, you gotta, it's not so predictable. I, it's all, it's, the game is so fickle. The game is so fickle, man. The game is so fickle. Like, it really is. It really is. It really is. It really is. But, yeah, I looked up to my dad because he's the definition of a man to me. You get what I'm saying? He's he's the definition. So I, I looked up to my dad. You know what I'm saying? He he kind of saved my life, adopted me, gave me a better a life. So it's really my dad. But when it comes to MMA, I uh, Kimbo Slice was the first one. Now when I started watching MMA, obviously John Jones, uh, Rampage, wow. you know th those those the the the, 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 typical, the typical George St. Pierre, the typical. You know those are the greats, the MMA greats. The MMA greats, bro. MMA greats and. And, I, and I'm glad that I started in MMA because it translated over to BKFC because BKFC is not boxing. Granted, it's bare-knuckle boxing, but there's mm -hmm. grappling but in the it's... inside, and that's where MMA come in. And I'm excited to use my inside grappling if my opponent can get past my punches my next fight because I've been training hard. After my last fight at BKFC, I just want to say I took three years off because there's no money in MMA. You get what I'm saying? They don't pay. And I got a yeah, dollar Yeah, except, except Peter climbed up, you know, to the UFC, the Bellator, it's, and yeah. you're even at the top of the yes. chain. Yes, you know, it's yeah, really, it's, it's, money. so I had to go start my business, Bam Bam Protection, travel the world. So when I came back and made my fight last August, I had took three years off. Um, Still trained, but not like now. Like after that fight. I was like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go chase the title in the BKFC for bare knuckle, right? Um, but I took three years off. So regardless, I dominated. I made a grown man quit on TV. I also had two opponents different before him. He just filled in because the opponents pulled out. Think about it. I have an opponent with 17 years of experience. It's all there on Instagram. I, I can find it. But he says that he had to pull out for the first time. He was coming from England. He was coming from England. Uh... 
his name was he uh, was coming from reality yeah so <laughs> i he, probably told you to pull out i told you to pull out because bomb bomb is a dangerous man <laughs> but his name was dimitri angelini and i was excited for him because he he had 17 years so i would finish him in my mind and it would be a good a good start well he pulled out because he had a, a sore thumb i don't know if he was sucking it too hard i don't know <laughs> what he was doing i don't know what he was doing but he pulled out and now he's still begging for an opportunity back in the, you had your opportunity you had to show up and you had to fight show um, up and show out and like even months after he'll talk about like he wants to listen we don't make fights in the bkfc like I really realize that everybody calling out, everybody, nobody, all that is crap. They they pull who will fight who they want to put to fight. So if they want to put me to fight you, I'll, I'll fight you, sure. But you pulled out, you had your chance. 17 years, you said you never pulled out, but you had to pull out. So they the BKFC Ramble, they got me another opponent. He decided, man, I don't want to fight Bam Bam. And then they got me another opponent, which I'm just grateful that he came so I could start my BKFC career. And obviously he knew he was going to get knocked out, so he looked for any way out. He quit on live TV. Everybody saw it, um, and their their logan on the BKC is lions not sheep, and I'm not lying that I'm I'm a lion and not a sheep, and that's not lying. That's the truth. Oh wow, interesting. So you, you transitioned from MMA, you did MMA for a bit, and then you transitioned into BKFC. Uh, so for you, that experience in MMA, like how does it you know come you know handy when it comes Co okay. to uh, yeah BKFC? Um, because since BKFC is not boxing they, they a lot of them just come and throw punches not so much technical but it's a fight anything can happen they hit you once you're going down but now mma they're not boxing either so those punches look a lot like mma punches um um and the main thing is in the clinch like when you're pummeling and you're doing work in the inside that's where it really translates um for example, I think to be the best bare knuckle fighter, you got to have boxing experience and MMA experience and mix it. If you're just a boxer in the inside, you're going to feel uncomfortable. If you're MMA in the inside, you're going to feel okay. But also when you're on the outside, the boxer might piece you up. But I got both. I got a Hall of Fame coach in boxing. And we could talk about that. His name's Warner Royal. Nobody got a coach like that. Um, Why is he coaching me? Because he sees the potential. This guy's a Hall of Fame coach. People don't have that. So I got that. I already got my MMA background. Um, and I just feel like I'm unbeatable in the BKFC. Now, anything can happen. That's the reality. I've been dropped before. Granted, my defense has got a lot better. I took three years off. I used to do five fights in one year, make weight cuts from 205 to 170. Like, I used to be like a caveman. I didn't know about IVs, three high. I didn't know nothing. I was just going out there to fight. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know. People were using steroids or what? I don't even care, but I'm just saying, like, in general, I didn't even, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, I didn't know about these things. Um, And now I'm just a smarter fighter. And there's people that are my level five years ago, and they don't even know that they got five years to catch up because there's levels to this. Just like if I wanted to start a podcast tonight, I would not be at your level. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's levels. I'm gonna have to yes. make through trial and error mistakes. Yeah, you need to learn. You need to learn things. Uh, you know what I'm time. saying? Um, for example, me, I always took the hardest road. If you look, my pro MMA debut was against a guy named Trey Waters. He's in the UFC right now, eight and one. He's two and zero in the UFC. Like these are the people I fight. He was six six, 170 pounds. I go to 170 because I'm six feet to be the taller fighter because that's fighting. You try to go down as much weight so you can be taller. I took him on because I wanted to know. He beat me. He was better that night. Um, granted, I don't think I'll lose again, but I don't, I'm not worried about that. He's a real, he's a real fighter. He's in the UFC for a reason. Um, and he might beat me again because he has so many tools, but I took two losses as an amateur and those guys wouldn't fight me again. You get what I'm saying? They might have retired already because people do things for two years. Oh, I'm a fighter. Oh, you, you gotta, you're not a bodyguard because you had two years of work or a fighter because you had two years of fights. No, you gotta do it for 10 years. You gotta, how long have you been doing, um, podcasts? uh just under a year under a year okay yeah no. just under a year and so so but oh well you do a good job i'm not gonna lie but so wow. one year, ima you, imagine imagine five years from now you get what i'm saying like wow. imagine you gotta put in the work um okay you're you're, you're look at you you're already you're getting murk you already interviewed fieldman in one year 
That's uh, you, you make you make your moves. You make your moves. Uh, I would have thought I would have thought you, you did longer. That that's just a a, a compliment to you then. Uh, wow, you. Thank under, you very under much. year, <laughs> under year, that's actually pretty good. That's yeah, I think June makes it. June, June makes it seven months, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, imagine five years from now. You get what I'm saying? If you put wow. in the work daily, you get me. Um, and that's just what I've been doing. Yeah, because it's all about consistency. You know what I'm saying? It's about doing the work when nobody's looking. You get what I'm saying? They're seeing our work now, our our our, our art, but. They didn't see how you had to set it all up and we had to do the DMs and the link. That's just to talk about this. And you have to do the same yes. thing with everybody else. You had to buy that mic and invest in yourself. It's like, I got to pay my uh, Yeah. Like, you got to invest in yourself. You know, Definitely. we're men. We're Definitely men. We, you like, have nobody, to. Nobody's going to okay. give us nothing, man. Nobody's going to give us nothing. Nobody, nobody. gives you, uh, I'm telling you, as a man, in, in a man's world, is quite tough, right? And speaking of David Feldman, right? I was speaking with David Feldman and he was talking about how you know, BKFC is pretty much the fastest growing sports organization in the world, how he creates holy shit moments, how he is able, he's in the business of, you know, turning people's careers around, giving people opportunities of a lifetime to transform, you know, their lives. Even he, he talks about how he's quite generous, but then he gives people that opportunity. It's not like he's like an open wallet, right? But then if you are able to cash in up opportunities, he can give you that opportunity to transform your life. So looking at the BKFC and your own self, right? What do you think is going to happen in, let's say, the next couple of years, the next five years? Where do you see the BKFC arts, right? Given the fact, um, shortly after I spoke to the Feldman was when he had that um, meeting with Dana White. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I interviewed Feldman, um, I think, the same week he had... The, 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 the meeting with Dana White, and some months after, I think he had the collaboration with Conor McGregor. You know, ah, uh, yeah, collaboration with Ryzen. Yeah, I think he told me about the one with Ryzen on on, on the sportcast, right? So we've seen a lot of collaborations, right? Where do you really see BKFC in the next five years, and how do you see yourself progressing with the organization? I, uh, I do. They are the fastest growing organization. You get what I'm saying? And that's why I say I'm the fastest rising superstar in the fastest growing organization. Um, Fantastic. That's just what I like to say because it's the truth. Um, yeah, they're they're just expanding and doing great things. I got nothing um, bad to say about BKFC. I wish I would have got a few more fights, but that's that's everybody. Everybody wants to fight. They only can get so many people on a card. Um, so you just got to wait your turn and not cry about it because we're men. So go do something else. Go wash your car. Go do Uber. Go do bodyguard. Go do security. Um, but they're growing. And I feel like, I, like I said, I, they reached out to me last time to uh, basically main event um, the BKFC prospects, their first prospects. I was their first post on their Instagram. You get me? And they're making moves. They were going to do their first show in Miami. So they reached out to me to help sell out the venue. And that's what we did. And I was excited because they are the fastest growing organization. And since last August, they've had all these people come in. Dana White, um, I mean, Conor McGregor, all these expansions and all these working together with bigger names. In five years, the sky's the limit for them and for me. I, I just, for me, it's all in my hands. If I get the opportunity and they send the contract and I fight July 12th, I need to finish my opponent in the first two rounds and leaving no doubt that I need to be back on real fast and continue my journey. That's just me. But as the BKFC, the sky's the limit. Just bringing in Conor McGregor, bringing in all these eyes, they're doing what they're supposed to do as an organization. They're hustling. So I just got to salute it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can't get mad. Like, there's Bam Bam and there's BKFC. They, they got to worry about BKFC. They're not worried about Bam Bam. But, hey, yeah, if exactly. you guys can find a spot for Bam Bam, I'm going to do my part. Um if whether it be fighting at home, try to do ticket sales. Um, but I don't really care about that. The no, I do numbers. They're just going to do the number. I don't like to have the pressure of that. I just like to go perform. But Bam Bam does have a following, and I could sell tickets. But um, I'm going to just do my part because I do want to be part of the fastest growing organization because the Fieldmans are doing great things. Even I was just supposed to fight on his brother's promotion, Celebrity Boxing. That didn't go through for whatever reason, but I think the Fieldmans are great. I spoke to both of them, and 
he does give opportunity. You know, before it was even cool to try out for the BKFC, I've been trying out. Like, before it was cool, like, 2019, 2020, like, when they were doing tryouts. Now it's a cool thing to try out. But before, I, I paid my own hotel. Like, it's all out there. And eventually, they did give me a shot. You know, I had to beg, and I had to train, and I had to, it took two, three years, but I got my shot. And if they give me another shot, um, I won't put it to waste because they are the fastest growing organization. I don't know what to say. They're the best bare knuckle company or 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 the most known. And they're putting on great shows. And now they're putting on numerous shows. I really, they were trying to pin me down to only fight in Miami because, you know, I got a following. But, like, I, I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm just not, like, like they treat me, they treat Bam Bam like a, like a circus act. Like, like oh, like, like um, never before seen. Like, but I'm a fighter. I, 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 I don't mind traveling to fight. I just want to fight. You know, I actually like that. I, I was a fighter before I was a bodyguard or, or a, a, a amusing to the, to the people. Or I was just a fighter. You know what I'm saying? So I'm into that. And if I do go fight, hopefully in California, that could be the start of me traveling and fighting. Because I could fight at home and I can fight over there. I could fight twice in one month. So they got a lot of shows. They're expanding. They're doing shows all over. They just went to New Mexico. You get what I'm saying? Like, they're really doing um, some big things. So my next step is have a big finish my next fight where they're like, oh, well, this guy. Because all my following is off of me and my own labor. Like, like you didn't meet me through the BKFC. You might have met me through yeah. Burke. That might have been BKFC. Yeah, but, like, yeah. but, 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 but really, you, you guys don't know me through the BKFC. Um, exactly. So once I – imagine when I get a following from the BKFC, like – so I get one more fight, and I finish the guy in Canada. That's going to be massive. You, exactly. I'll be 2 and <laughs> old. Now it's like, oh, this guy, he, you get me? So I know I just got to stay the course, and I want to stay the course with uh, BKFC. But at the end of the day, Bam Bam is business, and I got to go wherever because I got to make money. So if somebody else offers me decent money to fight, I'm going to have to take it because I can't be on the bench forever. Like I said, I'm 35. My time is now. You get what I'm saying? But I, I, I expressed that. Like to, you, you are your prime. <laughs> you get me? And I expressed that to them. And, you know, they act like they listen, but they got a million things to do. But, like I said, hopefully I'm on that card in Cali. And 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 I continue the journey to be the 175 uh, BKFC champion. Hmm, interesting. You know, it's not unusual to see uh, fighting promotions try to push homegrown talents. You know, in that city, yes. even the UFC, even the UFC try to, you know, make people that come from a particular city headline the cards or be in the main card. And right? it makes sense. It makes yeah, sense. It just, yeah, it does. It does make commercial sense, makes business sense. Right. Uh, but like Merck, I, I, Merck sells a whole bunch of tickets. You get me? Merck is, people want to go watch Merck. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. You met Bam Bam to Merck. Merck is, he's a home to, homegrown talent too. So he's in that same situation. Exactly. I, I did. I did meet you through Merck, right? And you know, Merck had I said, you know, a lot of great things about you. And of course, something Merck told me about you is the fact that you are involved in a lot of you know community work. You know, you guys are impacting your communities. There. Yes, if you, yes. If you, if you did see the tagline for my podcast, it is you know about sharing the stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. You know, we all ordinary people but then when we put in that extraordinary effort you know it helps us to to put to to achieve that extraordinary impact right i'm really proud of you with what you're doing with the community you're big on you know chasing your dreams but you're also big on you know achieving impact you know um reaching out to people make an impact on the lives of people. So tell us about the work that you guys do with the community and, you know, your team. That's that, that's a great one because everything that we said, we did all this talking, I didn't talk about the community or what I do because I don't do it, anything for a pat on the back. Like we said, we're men. We don't need a pat on the back. Now, mm -hmm. I, I like, see, I, this is what happens. Like, we talked all this fighting, all these tough things. So the community work goes under under the rug, gets swept under the rug. I'm not gonna be hey, I work, I do this for the community, or come out with a with a flag that says um <laughs> autism or or something. No, I'm gonna go to the community and 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 be with the people. Now, as I've gotten older 
and Bam Bam has grown, I did realize there's a lot of kids that look up to Bam Bam. Like, I'm not impressed by Bam Bam. He don't impress me. I think he's a scrub. I think you can fight better. I think you can get more work, and I think I can make more money. But other people, they'll be like, wow, I've done a lot of great things. Me, I'm not satisfied. But a lot of people would be happy if they ever got one millionaire client. I've had like 10. And a lot of people will be happy if they got one fight on the biggest platform. I, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people will be happy with 10% of what I've done, but I'm not, right? Now, once I noticed I was motivating a lot of kids, because a lot of kids will look up, you know, through Instagram. Right? That's what I'm saying. I'm 35. I don't care about Instagram. Instagram is not real. You know what I'm saying? Instagram is not real. It's a it's a promoting platform. Like there's people mm -hmm. that go on Instagram, like the girls that just put their, their boobs in and all this. They just want attention. You ain't selling nothing. Well, I don't know, they probably selling something, but but because you know guys only fans. Yeah, only fans. I don't know. Guys, I don't know. I don't know. Women as well. But but for me, I'm not seeking attention. Now, it might like what happens, what happens with me is I do so much, so it, the lines get blurred. Like, I need to make three Instagrams, like one for my fighting, one for bodyguarding, and one for my life. You get me? But since I mix it all, um, like I said, the community work goes under the table because I might post fighting, I might post bodyguarding, I might post this. And then, like I said, I'm not looking for a pat on the back of the community work. But once I realized that people do look up to Bam Bam, especially the youth, I was like, oh, well, I can motivate these kids. It's positive. It keeps me, um, like, for example, if I take an hour out of my day to go train some young kids for free, that's an hour that I'm, I'm entertained. I'm uh, not having no no negative things in my life it's positive whether it be working out uh motivating the youth you get what i'm saying like giving back now i have my clients millionaires that they they have money i'm not rich at all so they help me with give backs like i've been to dr to give back to the community we were just in miami giving back in thanksgiving um the the um, the autism community we they regardless if people have uh, defects, uh, physical defects, they still want to work out. So when they see Bam Bam, they're motivating them. Um, they work out harder. And I seen people that have life defects and then it makes me be blessed to have everything, you know, to be able to perform at this level. Um, and I you motivate the much. kids and I motivate these people that, um, like I see them all regular, but you know, they have, they have, uh, situations that, is out of our control. They say I motivate them, but the truth is they motivate me. By me motivating them, they motivate me because you see a girl, my friend Natalie, cerebral palsy. Um, she goes and she dominates competition. I think, you know, she can barely use her right side and she goes out there like a badass. I think she's a badass. She thinks Bam Bam's mm -hmm. a badass because I got two good arms, two good legs, and I can knock people out. No, that's that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm I'm God gifted. I'm I'm you let's I don't have cerebral palsy or autism. Um so I gotta do this. But they're doing what I'm doing with those um conditions. conditions. You get me? That's impressive. You get what I'm saying? That's impressive. I don't think yeah I was adopting all this. I don't think it's I think more impressive is my new girlfriend that came from Colombia and trying to hustle and she they they all these people that come from other countries trying to get into the States. I think that's hard. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It was hard maybe when I was one year old, but I'm fine now. You know what I'm saying? So the the back to the community thing, like when I give back, they motivate me. So really I'm selfish. I do it because it, it makes me feel good and they motivate me, even though they think I'm motivating them. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm motivating myself and I'm motivating them. But me and Merck, we've been giving back. I try to give back as much as possible because I just try to pay it forward whether it be training, whether it be financially, if I can, if, if I can, you know, like give back to the homeless. Sometimes I'll get a group of guys. I can only afford 25 bucks today, but if 10 people put 25 bucks, that's $250 that we can go feed back to the homeless. You know what I'm saying? I was just there with my girl and, and um, my daughter giving back like two weeks ago. I couldn't make it last week, but I gave a donation to, with my guy two tone. Um, but it's all over it's, but these guys aren't doing these things. You know what I'm saying? There's people in the BKFC four and oh, five and oh, six and oh, they think they're famous. They're not giving back They'll They'll hold up flags that say, um, autism, let's say, 
but they're not really giving back to the community. They're just mm-hmm. using the flag. Like, you know what I'm saying? And an album. Represented. Flag, yeah, like, they're just... There's a lot of phonies in this world. You understand? There's a lot mm-hmm. of fakes. Um, and like I said, there's people that do the community work and they'll want to let you know about it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I could care less. I wouldn't have even brought it up if you didn't bring it up. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. this is right now like Instagram. Like this is our bam bam. We're talking about fighting and we're gonna hype it mm-hmm. up and boom boom, you know, because that's what sells. I'll put a positive post on Instagram. I might get uh let's say 15 comments. I put a negative post, well, negative to them. For example, I don't know. You'll, you'll get 200 comments. You get what I'm saying? It's just like, like, <laughs> on you sales fast. Yeah, like it's, it's, and then they get mad, they get mad at me. So I'll see this in the algorithm. So obviously I'll, I'll play to that and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll put, I'll put things like, I'll use words like pimping ain't easy. Oh, he said pimp. Like a little four little word will will have them. You get what I'm saying? Like, like oh, so, okay. you know. So, well, I might as well just use words like this, cause, cause that's what this new world is. Uh, the algorithm, the comments, and all this crap that I could care less about. Cause I'm 35 years old. I'm just trying to be here with my family, go to work, train, and do what I gotta do. But obviously, when I see that, I'm just gonna use Instagram. Now people are like, oh, do TikTok. Do this, do that. I'm like, bro, I'm 35. I just figured out how to do Instagram. I I'm, I, I can't do TikTok, bro. I can't. I I can't. I, I just can't. I just social can't. media does a lot to this age of time, man. Bro, for real, for real, for real, man. Like, like, but but yeah, man. Giving back to communities is, is important. But no matter how much, let's say, I give back or I try to give back, um, they give me back more because. Um, they motivate me. They really do. But yeah, I, I be, we do. We're in DR. We do a whole bunch of things. I got. I got a thing on my Instagram. There is give back. We've been all over giving back. Um, and like I said, big thing about Merck is, for example, just like I met you, a lot of people try to stop Bam Bam Shine. Like Merck don't gotta say the good things I do, mm-hmm. but a lot of people don't. So I could be the bad guy because everybody thinks, like we said in the beginning, that they're the king of Miami. There's no king of Miami. Just chill. Just relax. You're a human being. You're just a Miami resident. You live here. There's no king, right? But people feel inferior or feel scared of, of my potential, but not Merck. So that's why he'll say the good things about me. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People have... I, I have, There was other people that didn't want to interview me because people will just lie. But since my name is so big and people don't know me, like if you don't get to speak to me like me and you... Like my girl that lives with me, like if if, if you don't speak to me, somebody, oh no, that bam bam, bro, that bam bam, he's crazy, bro. He he one time he slapped a monkey in the zoo. Let's just say, right? I never slapped no monkey in no zoo, right? Just but bro, bro, in the streets. <laughs> yeah, oh, bro, he slapped a monkey in the zoo. Since you're never gonna speak to me because you don't have access to me, that guy that said the rumor is obviously petrified or inferior to me or scared. Well, now bam bam, he goes to the zoo and he slaps monkeys. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, so. But Merck, no, Merck will say, nah, I don't know if he slaps monkeys, bro. I think he was petting the monkey after he gave him food. You get what I'm saying? Like, Merck is not afraid, so I really am grateful for Merck. Um, and he fights June 21st, so I need everybody to stay uh Yeah, that's the whole day time. By Merck. Yeah, man. And my guy Pink Panther also fights UFC legend. Only one of six Cubans ever to make it to the UFC. Um, He also fights June 21st. I was supposed to fight June 21st, but hey... Like I said, it's hard for me to... For example, people will call me out, right? Like I said, I had nine call-outs, nine pull-outs. They'll call me out because I'm, I am I have a name, right? And then they start doing their research, and they'll be like, oh, man, you got too much experience. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what, is, what? What do you mean? You didn't think about that before you... Call, oh, I got a tour meniscus. And these are guys bigger than... Well, these are guys that are bigger than me, and all. I got a tour meniscus. Oh... The BKC doesn't want me to go up and fight you. Like, all these excuses. Like, you guys didn't think about that before you called me out? Because we live in this Instagram world where anybody can type, sign the contract, and tag me. And now your followers or your girlfriend thinks you got the balls to fight Bam Bam. So she might actually give you some good sex on the night. Because she's like, ooh, you're a badass. You're going to fight Bam Bam. So now you got girls, ooh, you're going to fight Bam Bam. You got guys like, ooh, you're hard. The next day. They'll lie to the people, oh, whatever, whatever. 
but Bam Bam don't pull out. You see my Instagram. You see my Instagram. Like, they don't... I put it all out there, baby. I put it all out there. I'm not afraid of nobody. Um, And I don't need to lie. You know, I don't need to lie. Like, I don't need to lie. But people do lie. You get what I'm saying? People do lie. Like, for example, there'll be fighters 4-0, 5-0, 6-0 in the BKFC that think they're tough. My guy. I'm 175, 185 pounds. You might be able to beat those trash cans you fought at 145, but in the real world, there's no weight class. But people forget about that. In the real world, there's no weight class. So all that tough talk, just stay in your lane. You know what I'm saying? But people be delusional, and they call me crazy for being factual. You get what I'm saying? Because I'll see, like I said, you can't have five fights never hold a flag, right? And then in your sixth fight, you're holding a flag that says autism. Well, what was that flag five months ago? I thought you say your son, let's for an example, you say your son has autism. Uh, well, well, why didn't you, what happened the first five fights? Oh, it wasn't convenient. Now you're looking for pity points. Like, so since I say these things, I'm a bad guy, but I'm just a, a BKFC fan. I'm, and I'm just, I was watching the show. I saw what I saw and, I, and I'll make statements and I just speak reality. You know what I'm saying? Like my reality is a grown man quit on TV. Oh yeah, but he, 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 he was old. Wow, that was my third opponent. You get what I'm saying? But he also is a is a BKFC veteran. People are fighting trash cans trying to compare themselves to me. Um, you just gotta you could just look at my topology. Some fights don't show up, but if you look at the people I fought, some are in the UFC, they, they were undefeated. Like people are not taking challenges the way I took them to get here. Now I wish I would have picked my opponents and been smarter, but also it made me the man I am. If I would have picked my opponents, I probably wouldn't have ended up a bodyguard. You know, like, it's it's all about one decision could change your life. You get what I'm saying? So Time and chance. Time and chance, man. Time and chance. Yes, bro. Yes, yes, mm. yes, mm. yes. I, I, I want to put you on the spot now, right? Go, go. You, you, you're, you're spoken a lot about, you know, the fake social media life um, in this uh, current age and time. And I was speaking with somebody earlier today, and I was talking about how I think it's not cool the way a lot of people on social media act rude and they feel like it's cool to be rude, especially, you know, um, females, right? Especially oh. ladies, right? Yeah, they, they, they tend to feel like, you know, speaking to men disrespectfully, you know. Hey, don't get cool. me started because I'm it about makes, to go off on yeah. these women. <laughs> yeah, no, it, makes you feel, it makes you feel like, oh, I don't take nonsense as a woman. But for me, you know, you're 35, I'm 32. Right, uh -huh, we are uh -huh. millennials, right? But then I connect very well with you know the Gen Zs, right? And there are Gen Zs that are really cool, right? Respectful, and those guys that are level-headed, they're doing great stuff for themselves. And then there are some who take advantage of the fact that they're young to try to act like, oh, if you're young, you can be young on wild and free. Hey, you about to take me? Really so, so for me, right? I, I I wanted to pick your thoughts on you know Bro. how people you know because they have access to the internet, they can talk to people rudely. Hey, right? listen, is that, is, that, is, that, is that the new cool? Like, what listen, are your thoughts on this? I love it. I love that question. Look, because of Instagram and this new generation, women feel more important because they get some likes, or a guys can send them a DM. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yes, the new thing is to be rude. For example, like this is a weird thing. You follow me, but I can't follow you back because I'm bigger than you. Like this is just the new world we live in. Yes, women are out here dogging these boys because honestly, the men got part um, to blame too because they allow it. I don't allow it, exactly. but they exactly. allow I it. Not, I do not allow it. I these don't, men are out here paying, paying for women. Uh, like, this is insane world we live in. So I cannot fault all the women. But yes, for example, I've said it before. You'll have a girl, right? Whether the likes are fake or whatnot. Let's say they got 40,000 likes, right? A guy will go to her page and be the 40,000 and one like. Are you a clown? How are... Oh, and then they, the girl might have 33,000 comments. He gonna leave a heart eye emoji comment to be the 33,000 one comment. Like... What's, what are you doing, bro? She got 44,000. You have to hit like? You have to hit like? like you're, <laughs> you're pathetic. So I can't blame these women for dogging these dudes, right? But, yes, 
being rude is the new cool until it's not. You get what I'm saying? Because yes, like I tell all these women and all you, you guys are not going to have your youth forever. Mm-hmm. Women will look at you. I'm not going to give you the best years of my life. Uh, but, but, bro, listen, I don't want to hear nothing. I'm 35. And when these women are 35, they're done. But on Instagram, when they're 25, they think they're the baddest women in the world. Women over here walking around with one kid, two kids, three kids, four kids, five baby daddies. But on Instagram, woo they are entrepreneurs, baby. They aren't, they, they top dogs. Like they, they try to dog a dude. Like, here's the thing. For example, a man, we got to work for everything. Women will go to Colombia, get operated. They think they're on the same level as me that I had to work for my body. You get what I'm saying? Um, but then not me, I won't allow it, but other men will allow it. Other men will be like, Ooh, she did her tits and her ass. Now she's worth more money. Well, I mean, if you're with that, with that mentality, I can't be mad at the girl for taking all your money. You get what I'm saying? Me personally, I'm not impressed. You get what I'm saying? I'm not impressed. I don't think, for example, these women, they want a real guy, a real, I've been trying not to use the N word, even though. Because I've, I've been going to higher platforms and a lot of plat. I say the N word, just like "What's up, my bro?" Like it's like it's not. You know, I'm a minority, but I'll I'll, I'll not use the N word. So I'll say they want a real dude, a real guy, but they got fake ass, fake tits, fake teeth, fake nails, fake eyelashes. You understand what I'm saying? Like how you want a real dude? You get what I'm saying? But this is Instagram. And but but now it's not even Instagram, just in general, because I got the Snapchats, they got the WhatsApps. These I don't even know. They got the they got the they got everything. I don't even know what I I only have Instagram and my phone. I don't even use Facebook. But these women got Facebook, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just it really is insane. They think because, like I said, how can you want a real dude, but everything about you is fake? You understand? How can you want a real dude and you got three kids? Like, now, I if a, if a guy gets with a girl with three kids, that's on him. I'm not going to get into it. I think he's an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Um, But you're giving her a pass. But in her mind, hey, bro, hey, I got two kids, three kids, four kids. You got to love me the same. Nah, bro, that's not life. That's not life. That's not life. Women get money and they say they don't need a man a man gets money and he says oh i can finally take care of my family it's just reality bro it's just the truth um and i would can't trust the women as far as i can throw them yeah i know judo and i can throw them pretty far but that still ain't far enough to trust them i don't trust these women you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. they it's, all it's every woman i've ever crazy. had in my life they let me down you know what i'm saying and i'm bam bam uh... And I'm, uh, and I'm bad, bad. Bad. No, for example, they, they oh, I can go find a white guy with money and then what? Go suck some wrinkly balls? What are you talking about? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, like they, oh, oh, that, that that's, yo, because you can get a white guy to give you money. Okay, go be with him. You're not going to be with him. You're just another, you know what I'm saying? They got this world and Instagram and this new generation. Like, it's just, they got their priorities messed up. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like uh, yeah, they got their priorities messed up. That's that's all I'm saying. Like, you, you know, for me, for me, right? I, I, the the biggest problem that I have with people um, in recent time is disrespect. I'm African. I'm Nigerian. I grew up in Nigeria. You know, in Africa, we have a very very big premium on respect. And for from the tribe that I'm from, Yoruba, the Yoruba base. We, we place a lot of premium on respecting people and respect is meant to be reciprocal, you get it? So you, you, you can be anything you want to be in, in the world, right? But you don't have to talk to people disrespectfully. And I believe, you know, I, I've been around the, the world, you know, being around, you know, uh, a couple of countries, right? And one thing I have noticed is that there are certain values that are universal, you know, Respect is one of those you know, universal values. Uh, respect, honesty, integrity, you know, hard work. These are values that are that are respected across the globe, whether you're white or black, 
pink, you know, brown, whatever it is, your, your race or your skin color is, people would respect certain values. Now, that, that being said, right, you, you, you get to see people, especially a lot of women nowadays, you know, having an entitlement mentality. You want men to do things for you, right? Yet you still disrespect these men that you want to give you money. Like I, I, I once met, you know, a lady and she was telling me about, oh, like I, I, I can't be rolling with a guy that doesn't have money, blah, 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 right? And it was so funny that, you know, I engaged this girl in a conversation because she, she came with her friend, right? And we were on a night out you know, her friend was with a doctor friend of mine. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she got introduced to me because I was with my friend. Mm -hmm. And she was all like, I had not even had a five minute conversation with her. And she was like, oh, I have to spend money on her, blah, 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 blah. I was like, excuse me? Like, I just that, think I don't even know you. That's women, bro. To, 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 to spend money, right? And in my head, it, it just felt it felt absurd. And then she was like, "Oh, you're not even well dressed. Like, you did not come out to impress me. Like, excuse me, I don't impress anybody. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, go, I, I'm like, go read my profile. If you if read my profile, <laughs> you probably be impressed. And if you're not impressed, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. Then, you know the interesting thing. I." And I asked the girl, like, okay, what is it you do for work? Like, what do you do for a living? And she told me one very, very crazy <laughs> stuff. Like, she, I, I think she, she was probably, like, a level above the cleaners. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I thought about it, like, you look at a person like myself. I'm not trying to be proud of something, right? I have a background in finance. I've worked with two of the top four accounting firms in the world, right? So not many people can lay claim to working with the biggest organizations in their professions, right? And of course, you know, in accounting, we have something, you have some organizations called the big four. And I've had experience with two of them. I, at the time I was even an assistant manager with one of the big four firms. And then I look at this kind of a person, like why, why would you be talking brutally? Now in contrast, I met another person through the same friend. And this person, you know, had done big things for herself. And I was amazed at how humble she was until I went to check her, her profile. And I was like, wow, wow, you've done this thing, you've done that thing, you know, you've achieved this thing, you've won this award. And it's crazy how women with, you know, big accomplishments, right, tend to be humble and respectful. And uh, uh, the women that haven't even achieved much are the ones who like get a talk disrespectfully. I don't know if it's like a self-esteem issue or something, but like what has been your own experience? <laughs> Bro, like I said, Miami is the home base of these type of women. That's another thing too. Like I tell you, Miami scarred me because I know if I, but here's the thing, women is the same worldwide, right? But mm -hmm. I know if I go to like a white state, women gonna be different. I can't relate to those. Like I, I like my women Latin, so I'm perfect in Miami, right? But, mm -hmm yes these women do feel entitled right but it goes just like just like the guys like that haven't done nothing but they they act like these women you know what i'm saying so but let's say a guy like me or a guy like you which we're humble um because we know we can lose it all in a second because we, yes, we might have you know what i'm saying like you said it's you really can, and, and it's really hard to build yeah yes and so i think it's just a self-esteem thing with these women like you just said it, like, we're just like, for example, when I walk around, I got all these haters and these trolls talking about I ain't shit, I don't do shit, blah, blah, blah. But people that do stuff, do shit with their life, they be like, damn, I see you, bam, doing your thing, yeah, 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 yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it be the people not doing anything that, and it goes the same thing for women. The only thing women has just, like I said, men have inflated women's minds just like the dollar has gone up with inflation. I think women's head has been inflated also. Um, but you just gave a good, perfect analogy. Like, you're one step up from the cleaners, right? But here's the thing. We're all human beings. These women are setting themselves up for failures because that's why God sent a guy like me. They're 24 now, 23 now, 25 now. Wait, look, funny story. I was 25, right? I had a girl at that time. She was also 25. Well, I was probably young and probably a little more crazy, so we went our separate race. I was 34 now the other day she tried to come back in my life. 
um, baby girl, you 34. You're not 24. So you don't, that's whole 10 years. For a woman, that's a big difference. For a man, we don't hit our peak really till 35. You know what I'm saying? Or in your 30s, you get what I'm saying? Like, you figured out, now you got this. At 30, I started my business of, of you know what I'm saying? Like, we're men. We're men. Now we got to go buy the yacht. While they've been giving away in bikinis and, and yachts just because they got invited, that they've been giving these things. These women don't know it, but you've been giving these things. You didn't work hard for it. So when you're 35 and you don't have your looks to rely on, what are you going to do? You ain't going to use this because you didn't master it in your 20s like me or like you to start this podcast or me be at the highest of bodyguarding uh, with the highest profile clients or be at the highest platform and BKFC. Why do you think I got that? Because I'm smart. Because in my 20s, nothing was given to me. No. I mean, I don't be wrong, but I wish I was a girl and I look good. And I'd probably be a millionaire by now. If I was a girl, <laughs> if I was a girl, I'd work harder than these women. These women make money and then they don't work for a month. You show me how to make a thousand dollars, I'll work 30 days straight. You show a girl how to make a thousand dollars, she'll work two days. Ooh, I, I'm, I'm so successful. Well, you ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, go be successful. Go work the whole thirty days, make thirty thousand. But women don't have that mentality, you know. Mm. And I and I, but it's okay. You. <laughs> that's why. That's why it's it's fine. It's women, you know. You lead. There's men. There's women. It's, nobody's better than nobody. But yeah, man, I don't know what to say. Like, cause you hit it on the head, and I don't want to go off on a crazy rant and lose all my women followings. You know what I'm saying? Cause I love women. <laughs> I love women, and I'm not against them. I'm just speaking facts. But like I said, I don't blame mm -hmm. them because there's a lot of sucker dudes. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that, well, that's the thing. I feel like so, some men, you know, encourage this kind of behavior. Yes. So I, I remember very clearly, you know, when the girl spoke disrespectfully to me, I just told her, I'm sorry, like, I can't continue this conversation. But I know that there will be guys who would, you know, still want to talk to them. Like, I have... I have nothing to gain talking to you, right? I have nothing to gain, you know, talking to somebody disrespectfully. You know, it's a different thing, you know. I, 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 I think about it, you know, there are ladies who would want something from you. Let's say a girl wants you to buy her a drink. Then some girl comes at you and tells you rudely, oh, buy me a drink. Like, why? Why should I buy you a drink? And then, you know, there's some other girl who told me, oh, I'll, I, I'm thirsty, right? I'd like to go get a drink. Would you like to come with me? And she took her card. And when we got there, she was like, oh, would you like to get it for that, me? Hey. Like, I was like, well, I, look, like, this is a smart, Everybody this knows. is a smart move. <laughs> Women, look, like, if I think you out for the money, I'm not, but here's the thing, I'm not mad at you, woman, for being out for the money. You're just not going to do it with Bam Bam. Like, for me to be in a relationship, the girl got to take me out for the first date. The girl mm. got to spend money on me. Because if not, <laughs> I'm the one that's going to end up losing in the long run because I'm still a man wow. and I'm still going to take initiative. But I want to see you be like, oh, I'm going to put money in Bam Bam's hands. I'm a, I, we, we in this together. We're doing it together. This is not a one-way street. But a lot of men are okay with that. And that just goes to, like, for example, let's say if you're paying to, uh, for a woman's companionship, you must lack something else. Now, I, I'm not mad at you if you're like, I'm super successful and I'm using my dollar to control these women. I don't know, whatever thing you got in your head, that's fine. But for the most part, I would think if you're paying for a woman's time, you obviously can't get it for free. So you're using your hard earned money to uh, satisfy whatever craving you got in that situation. So I can't be mad at you doing your thing, but it's insane. Me personally, I need a girl to spend money on me. You know what I'm saying? If a girl tries to charge me or anything, I'm like, yo, I look in the mirror if, See if it says sucker or, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I look, and but that's just crazy. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. I don't know what to say, man. But yes, men is out here just be, making us look bad. So I can't blame all the women. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we talked about the women, right? But how about the men, right? In this age and time, we have a lot of men who do you not know, act right, right? They they encourage like certain you know terrible behaviors, but uh, <laughs> what's your what's your take on the on the whole issue? Like I said, and um, all right. So for example, with the men, like for example, all the fake jewelry and all the fake stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like that's their version. Like well, all, 
the internet has has made everybody feel bigger than what they are. Um, and life life will just have a way of humbling everybody. Now, guys that partake in these women, like I don't hey man, do your thing, bro. If that's what you want to do, do it. But I just think it's not for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not for me. It's funny business. It doesn't look good. I couldn't be linked to paying for a woman's time, but if a man wants to pay for a woman's time, do your thing. Um, and if men are paying for women's time, I'm not mad at the woman for getting money, right? But then it just, they'll come meet a guy like us and think it's the same. It's not the same. It's just not. It's just not. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, like I, I, I even myself, this is how I know men must be going through tough times. Because I'll go on podcasts, I'll speak like this, and women still, oh, I, well, like because of them, they'll still, oh, I, yeah, you know, I got to pay this, I got to pay, well, go pay it. The fuck you telling me for? Go pay it. What you mean I got to pay it? Go pay it. Like, I got a whole daughter. And that's the only woman that will get money out of me. Love and affection is my daughter. And it's that simple. And any woman that tries to get in between me and my daughter is not a woman for me. And you trying to take food out of my daughter's plate because other guys have strayed you or led you the wrong way, thinking you won't get a daughter out of every dude you meet. That's just not for me. But they do it with confidence. And then if you look at them like they're weird, they'll reply to you. Oh, you don't got money. Just say that. Well, well if, if I didn't have money, I'm not going to tell you you're a stranger anyways. Like I, they just they just say a whole bunch of things like so because I don't want to pay for your food on the first date. Let's say I don't have money. Oh, OK, fine. I don't have money. So are you going to pay for the meal? You got to say like like. And then what's money? If you're not sitting on millions, you don't got money. You know what I'm saying? You could you could have a hundred thousand and lose it all, or buy one property and, and, and you back up zero. Like these people talk about money, they never had no money. Um, that, 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 that's a funny thing, you know. People that have money do not talk about money. Then people that have no money try to act like they have money. It's just crazy. I think it's like a self esteem thing, you know. It, 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 <laughs> it, like I said, like it's it's. It's it's weird. There's a lot of delusions in this world. Um, and and yeah, like I think social media does play a big part in it because let's say not even women, but like like the men, like it alter egos, you get what I'm saying? And I think that's what people think of Bam Bam when they don't know, oh, it's alter you, let's challenge him. But then they find out. Like, for example, if you call me out in Miami, right? Leave it as a call out and do your thing. Don't start talking too crazy because I know everybody in Miami and I'll and I'll be on. I'll have somebody call you and be like, yo, you're talking a little crazy. You know, we could just meet up at a gym. And then nobody ever meets me up at a gym because they just want a fire session. <laughs> you know, like and, and we don't gotta do just it's a real fight. So show up at your way, kicks, chokes, the whole thing. Oh, you want a referee. So then keep it cordial when you're calling me out and watch your mouth. But I think that has worked against me in trying to get a fight from people in Miami because they're like, oh, this guy, like, I'm not playing with you. Like, like don't call me out and then want leniency. Nah, you're my enemy for life. You have the balls, <laughs> you have the balls to call me out for five minutes, and now you're gonna have to deal with me for life. Like, like so so, so you're always standing on business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, like I'm always, always I have to stand like always. And, 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 and it comes, they try to switch the script. Like, I'm crazy for standing on business. Just say I'm standing on business. Don't say, oh, that, that guy, he's crazy. Bam Bam's crazy. He's on a rant. No, I'm standing on business. How are you going to call me out and then say you got a tour minister? How are you going to call me out and then say, oh, you got too much experience? How are you going to call me out? Because these are three different people. I'm just giving, I'm coming, oh, no. I know I said I'll come up to 175, but the BKFC doesn't want me to go up 10 pounds. Damn, but you guys were saying my name. You know, so your girlfriend can hear you like, like, ooh, I'm going to fight Bam Bam. And then they never fight. So really, it's happened so much that these people are starting to lose credibility. And I'm starting to finally gain credibility because they tried to um, put me as the bad guy for calling these people out. Because like, let's say in one month, I had to reply to nine people. It could look like I'm crazy replying to them if you don't know what's going on. You get what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. people are starting to see, people are starting to see like, oh man, Bam Bam just defending himself. And the more they listen, like I'm telling you, like it might sound ugly what I'm telling these guys, but I'm just defending myself. They call me out. They call me out. Now that I think you're a coward because you say you got a torn meniscus, 
I'm, you should have thought of that before you called me out. There's no sympathy here. That might sound crazy if you hear it in a story, but really I'm just defending myself, right? Like, if you're on that side, let's say you have a business, right? And you let a guy call me out with your business shirt. I'm not shopping at that business ever again. And I say to everybody, don't go over there and don't deal with that business. That's me. Like, like, I, I, how am I about you? You should have not let him call Bam Bam out wearing your business shirt. Like, you, we're everybody's ignoring that and they're just going straight to my reaction. Not what made me, not the action that made me. You get what I'm saying? But through time, just like you, just like me, the real will prevail. Like maybe when we were 20, I mean, we probably had girls at 22, but people doubted us. But now in our 30s, they're like, oh, he oh. knew what he was talking about in his 20s and he's still and he's still doing it at 30. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's about longevity. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people come and go and they're gone like the wind, the the, the dust in the wind. Um, but I'm here to stay where, wherever it may be. And life is a fight. Life is a chess game. You get me? Like I said, I don't make all my money off fighting, so I got to do other things, whatever it may be. I don't think I'm famous. I'm a local legend. I've been on TMZ. I've been on Only and Dave. I've been on all, every... I've been on DJ Academics twice. Like, I've been interviewed. I've been there with Jack Boy. I've been there with another millionaire client. Like, I've been there all over. I, I, I've done it all, and I'm just getting started. But um, it's all God's plan. You know what I'm saying? Me even interviewing you is God's plan. Uh, wow, like crazy I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask to be a bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? I just got it happened. I didn't ask to be. They call me. I don't call nobody because mm -hmm. I don't have time. Like you'll never see me in somebody's. I might go look at your story now because we didn't but I don't even have time to look at other people's stories. Like I know it might look like I'm on Instagram 24 seven, but trust me, I'm not. You don't have this physique or this talent or or this work ethic, and I'm on Instagram 24 seven. So people that think I'm on Instagram 24 seven, that will tell you right there. You don't know me. You don't know me, but they think they know me. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people, you don't know me, you've heard of me. You get what I'm saying? But I think my biggest problem to, in the takeaway is this, too much stung on one Instagram. I need to make three Instagrams. One for, you get what I'm saying? Because my fighting, they try to blur it with my bodyguarding. Got nothing to do, even though it's the same person. You get what I'm saying? So people run, like, let's say, I might go in a month. First of all, guns are I got my concealed everything, but guns are legal in Miami and Florida now, right? Um, and everybody's licensed and insured in my business, but sometimes guns come out in my photos. If I'm in a month of just bodyguarding, you know, we'll take photos and a gun might come out. Then, oh, they try to, they, oh, he, he had a gun in the photo. I mean, that's a legal gun. I'm a legal carrier and I'm working though. Like I'm not doing, um, Oh, well, yeah, sometimes I might come out in a music video holding a gun because I looked apart. You get what I'm saying? That's why I blossomed in bodyguarding because a lot of people were able to say they didn't have a bodyguard or didn't have security because I wouldn't dress like security and I'll dress like one of the homeboys. So the rappers get to get, get away with saying that they don't have security. You know, every rapper wants, I don't have security. Even if I'm security, I'm just dressed normal. <laughs> but undercover. <laughs> you're undercover, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it just, life is crazy and... We out here grinding, trying to make a dollar out of 50 cent. And uh, nothing is nothing is given to us. Nothing is given to us. And I'm still literally fighting for everything. Every like if you look, I'm I've been trying to get a fight just to perform and chase that dream, but that doesn't mean I haven't have gone to work. Like we we can't stop. You know what I'm saying? The time doesn't stop, so neither could we. Mm, interesting. So I'm, I'm I'm gonna ask you a question now. Like looking at your life, right? What would you say have been your biggest challenges and what would you say have been, you know, your biggest wins that you are proud of as a person? It's going to be real simple. The biggest thing I'm proud of is, is my daughter. Um, I know that's a typical answer, but it's the truth. Um, I didn't, before she was born, that wouldn't have been my answer, but she's my inspiration and she's the reason I, I stay on the, the straight and narrow for the last seven years because she's seven now, about to be seven in June. Um, and my biggest, I like I said, like I don't like to make excuses. Um, whatever has happened to me, it's been all my fault. Because as you get older, you gotta look in the mirror. Like it's all your fault. If you're speeding, you got a ticket. It's your fault. If you you, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. So, but my biggest thing to overcome, and I'm not gonna lie, and and, it, and I also because everything is public. I I don't have secrets in a sense of, um, bam bam. 
people like Bam Bam because I give them the real, the raw, and the authentic. So when I did split up from my ex-wife and I went from having my daughter every day in my life, you know, it did cause like a year of depression because I, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an adopted kid. So all I want to do is be there for my daughter every day. And you know how baby moms, they get spiteful. Or they try to hide the kid or a whole other thing. They used to kill me inside. But I'm over it now. I've moved on. You know what I'm saying? But that was a tough time in my life to overcome. At the same time, I was at the peak of my bodyguarding career, traveling the world. So I had to keep my head on a swivel. I was still fighting, like always training. But all I ever really wanted to do was be a good father like my dad was to me that adopted me. So when they took that from me, for a year, you know, they're not letting me see my kid or making it super hard or, you know, I don't know if what they're telling my kid is, is negative. Um, that was that was tough. That was tough. But how did I get over it? Because I realized I'm not the only guy going through it. We all go through mm. divorces and lose our kids. It's it's I'm not the only. So once I realized, well, I'm not the only one going through this. Man, you better man it up, bam, bam. I got over it. But it was it was tough because I don't know, like I just want to be there for my daughter. But now I got my days. The divorce is finalized. So I'm back on a, a regular schedule. I'm going to pick up my daughter later. And and it's it's summer now. So she's going to spend a couple of nights. But that was tough because bodyguarding, fighting, none of that shit matters if I'm not a good dad. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that's... For example, like, just to talk uh, between men, like, when I didn't see her for a year, I felt bad because it was like, if she don't got a dad, she got a dad in Miami, bam, bam, right here. I live five blocks away, but she might think that her dad ain't there for her. And those things bother me because I'm there. I'm just, she don't understand it, but they're not letting me see you or trying to make it hard or whatever the case, right? And it eats you mentally. It ate me mentally. It, it, it did. It did. Like, and I'm just a weak man. That's why I'm tough and all this. Uh, a weak man crying every night, missing my daughter, you know, uh. It would be even hard to be in relationships with, with women that got kids because I'll tell the woman. I'll be like, I apologize because I'm real. I said, but I cannot, this was back then, I cannot be around your kid and then not be around my kid. I feel like a disloyal father. Mm. Like, you get what I'm saying? I just can't. That, and that's my mentality. So I would be like telling the woman in my life at that time, like, I apologize. I know you got a kid, but I can't, I'm not happy because I feel like I'm disloyal to my daughter. But now I get my daughter whenever, and it, everything is 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 back to the way it should be for a daughter that has parents that are divorced. You get me? Yeah. But I'm seeing her, so it's all good. We're all gonna go through it. But yeah, that was really a tough time. Like it really was. It really was. Cause down deep inside, I'm just trying to be a family man. That's how I function best. I think I just like every man, every man. And I was trying to be that with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? But hey, life. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I came out on the other end of it better than before. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I look at my daughter. She's strong. She, it's like, I might not see her for a week, but it's like we didn't miss a beat. You know what I'm saying? She's right here, ready to go, knows I'm her dad. And I was just scared that she was going to forget me. But after that year and the divorce went through, everything is back to normal. But that was the toughest part. And that was the hardest part. But... My daughter, Bella, is all about Bam Bam and Bella. If you look at my Instagram and everything I do is for her. So mm -hmm. I want her to be proud of the dad she got. And that that she she's the reason I stay on, like I said, on the straight and narrow. But that was that was the toughest part. Like, the, I, like I said, I don't have a mom. So I, I really haven't suffered a death in my family because the only thing I have is my dad. I'm adopted. You know what I'm saying? He's still alive. He's 59. So just losing my daughter really was, you know what I'm saying? Because the rest is just life. We all go, we all go go bankrupt. We all gonna be in debt. We all gonna go to the hospital. Like we all gonna lose a fight. You know what I'm saying? We all gonna lose a business deal. Um, but losing your daughter is just a little different. And that's how I felt. Granted, I didn't lose my daughter, but that's how it feels. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they were trying to hold, I had to do my part. I, you know, it's a whole other story, but. That was a tough, that was tough. And I think any dad, any man, because I spoke to many, because now Bam Bam is growing a lot of fathers. I fight for fathers. I fight for single fathers. Um, they all been going through it. You know what I'm saying? And they're not Bam Bam in the sense of, well, just like me, I live a regular life, but you get what I'm saying. Like, 
they live we, we all we all live in a regular life and now you got to live a regular life and they got to pay child support um just like me to see the kid that so we're all going through it as men you get what i'm saying so so i just got it's over it. it yeah like i saw my dad go through it my dad went through it and he went through it my friends go through it everybody goes through it so i just got to man it up but it was tough it was tough because i would have liked to her not to take that year off it was a tough year, but we're here now. You know what I'm saying? I'm here now with you on this podcast. So God is good. <laughs> God is good, man. God is good all the time. Wow. Um, I have two more questions left. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, you were talking about God is good, right? Uh, for you, to, I'm, I'm really struggling to, to put this together, right? You know, a lot of people acknowledge God in their lives, right? You know the god influence the god factor right for you at what point did you really get to see god doing things for you at what point did you get to realize that the god factor was really true for you man that's a great question right and uh maybe i don't know i don't think i am but i'm because i everything i answer i don't think about it. i just speak it's like a freestyle so i might get canceled by the catholics and the christians i don't know but my whole life, I was religious, right? I was adopted. I, I, I was a religious guy. Now, after 18, I kind of lost my faith. But I think that happens because of life or whatnot. I don't know. But I, uh, like I said, like, anytime I have needed God to come through, he comes through. Whether it be, if I'm hungry, he'll provide me with a banana. You got to be happy with the banana he provided you. Once I started seeing... um. Like, you'll ask God for a house, but he'll give you the material to make the house. And then you say he ain't give you shit. I start, when you start realizing that, like, he'll give you everything you need. Um, Like, for example, this stuff, bodyguarding and fighting, I didn't ask for it. God, you get what I'm saying? That's all God. I didn't ask for none of this. Um, even when I think it's going bad, God is just making me tougher. Because if you think about it, I started my life, I was going to be an orphan kid, and I got adopted. You could think that's negative. Like, starting like that, adopted, it's tough. But that was God's plan. Because it made me the man I am. Who knows? I could have been probably dead or something um, if it didn't go the way I it went. So I don't... I trust the process of everything. But all I know is that when I've had deep conversations with God or to figure it out, he's there for me. You know what I'm saying? And really, people, they want him to be there for him. But what they really want is, like, they want him to do things for you for them. Like, no, he's going to give you what you need. And if he gives you a new day to wake up with air, that's enough right there. Like, you got to be happy God gave you another day. Um, he's not gonna put a million dollars in your bank account. You gotta go get it. But he gave you the legs to do it. You get what I'm saying? When you start, but this comes with age. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm pretty sure I didn't talk like this when I was 25. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I've grown, I've matured. Now I got a whole kid. Um, but God provides you with more. We live in a. I, I live in America. You know what I'm saying? We live in America. Like God bless America. God bless America. <laughs> like, like you, you're not gonna go hungry. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, for the most part, um, because even if you go hungry, at least let's say you're homeless. Well, you stand on the corner and somebody might give you $20, right? That's God to go get a meal. I'm just saying to get you to the next day. I don't know how you ended up on the street. That's a whole other conversation. But God will always provide you with just enough and more because we're alive every day. We got all work perfectly working limbs. And if, if you're healthy, that's all you can ask God for. Go get a job at McDonald's. It starts like that. You start building up your bank account. Like, but a lot of people don't want to do the, the work. God will give you the, the way. You just got to trust. Now, like I said, all this stuff is just God's plan. This is not my plan. For example, this interview right now, it's not my plan. It just, it came through, through trusting in God in the process. Like when I get a fight next month, all right, it took longer than what I want, but that was God's plan. You get what I'm saying? If God makes me decide to go to Romania or to pick a fight, 
I guess that's what God wants me. God wants to see what, oh, what do you want to do? You want to be a bodyguard or you want to be a world champion? I guess he really wants to see when I talk to him at night and I tell him what I want to. So you get what I'm saying? That So I'm going to make my, you get what I'm saying? So God has been more than, um, even when I have zero dollars, God is still, it's not God's fault. It's my fault. You know what I'm saying? It's all my fault. And he he's he's been more than 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 great with me. Um my dad's still alive, my dad's healthy, my brother's healthy, my daughter is healthy. That's really all that matters. That's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like we with, with Instagram and all this other crap, the lines get blurred, like what matters, but what really matters is family and the people that's gonna be there for you because whether I was bam bam or was not, at least my family would be there for me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, it's just business. You know what I'm saying? It's really just it's life. It's just life. It's just business. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was going through that year of emotion, like that I had my daughter, who was there? My dad and my brother. You get what I'm saying? Um, and they're healthy. So what, what more can I ask of God? You get what I'm saying? I'm 35. I'm still healthy. I'm alive. Miami's crazy. I could have been dead. I could have been in jail. I'm here. You get what I'm saying? I'm here. Hey, God, God is good. God is yeah, good. man. I, God wow. is good. <laughs> wow. Uh, so basically, you are like a big brother, you know, in society. Uh, what is your advice for young people, young up and coming people? If you were to give, you know, your younger self or the young, the, yeah, the young people in this generation, if you were to give them advice, you know, what what nuggets are you going to give them? Like I would say, because I don't want to sound like an old man. But it's 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 the it's the basic information knowledge that like older people give you when you're younger that you don't listen to because you think um you know better. Like I tell everybody now, if you're close to me, because I don't like to walk around giving advice because I don't know better than everybody. I don't know. But now if you come around my life, whether it be a girlfriend, will be a business partner, I'm gonna try to build you guys up because I got a plan, right? But now, what was the question? Say it again, say it again. Yeah, what advice do you have for okay. young people? Yeah. It's the basic, it's the basic advice. Time flies, don't waste no time. Don't wait on no handouts, go and get it. But most importantly, time flies. My dad told me I'm gonna blink and I'm gonna be out of high school. I blinked and I was out of high school. My high school is right across the street. So I passed by and I think about every day when I was just in high school, 18. Um, and now I'm 35 and I blinked and I'm here now with a whole kid. Time flies. Um, so don't take time for granted. And that's the main thing. A lot of people waste time. I've done it. I mean, we all waste time. Watching Netflix is a waste of time. Like, we all waste time. But so when you're 33, don't realize that if you didn't get to your goals because you didn't put in the extra hours in your 20s, and I'm not saying I did or I didn't. I worked hard always, but I could have always done more. You could always do more. Um don't complain later in life for what you don't have for the work you didn't put in. Is all I'm saying. Mm. Time flies. Time flies. Make the most of it. Chase your dreams. Like I'm trying to tell my daughter. Try to aspire to be whatever you want to be. You know what I'm saying? But yes, stay in school. School is the best way. The smarter you are, the more intelligent you are, the more books you read. Like these are good advice. It's the typical stuff because in life, you'll figure out where life or where you need to go in life by yourself. So you got to give them some basic advice, like time flies, chase your dreams, and don't waste no time. Hmm, fantastic. Well said by a big brother. And of course, you know, uh, at the end of the poll, we have a tradition wherein the last person, you know, gives uh, the next person a question. I think the last person was, was your friend, Merck. It was right? my hey, Merck, June 21st <laughs> at the Hard Rock. Merck's about to catch a body. Oh Mark wow! <laughs> so I think the, the question left with you is, um, what, what martial arts, right? What discipline of martial art do you think is best to train in for uh, self defense? That's a great one, man. Yeah, if you had to pick uh, one, uh, which, no, which one would you would you pick? I'm gonna I'm gonna incorporate myself into this answer. <clears throat> I would say jujitsu. Now you got to start knowing how to fight, so you got to train them all because all fights start standing but a lot of them end up on the ground for example i'll just go into myself but my answer is jujitsu but why in bodyguarding i know i'm vicious this assassin i'm not trying to hit nobody on the job 
because then my client could get sued. I could get sued. Mm -hmm. Liability. I'm trying to verbal judo. But when verbal judo don't work, granted, if I have to punch somebody and I've done it, I'm going to defend myself. I'm not about to get hit. I got to make it home. But I like to subdue the person without causing any hit injury. So I go to, I, I go to jujitsu. Um, and so in bodyguarding, I've had to use jujitsu a lot. Um, where the guy doesn't leave bruised up. Maybe I put him to sleep. Um, maybe I just take him down with an arm drag or a basic stuff that they're not looking for. They give me the underhooks. It's MMA talk. Um, but it made me excel in bodyguarding because all fights are going to end up on the ground and a lot of people don't train jujitsu. So I would say jujitsu, but you definitely have to know how to box because it's all going to start standing. But if you know jujitsu, you'll be all right because you'll just take them down. Now, that's one-on-one. -on -one. Now, when there's other people, that's a whole different thing. You know what I'm saying? Like two-on-one. -on -one. Now, you, you need to assess the situation. You don't want to lay on the floor or go down because they're going to hit you. But that's a whole other conversation. But my answer would be jujitsu because I have used jujitsu in many occasions to get me out of situations where nobody gets injured and I don't get sued or 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 press charges or whatnot, or my client. So I would say jujitsu. Wrestling wow, is good too, wow. because all fights <laughs> end up on the ground. Eventually, you're gonna end up on the ground. Exactly, but then in, in, in order to, to, to subdue the person, in order to get the person, you know, restrained, I think jujitsu it's it's a really really great option. I uh, I was once involved in a situation where I had to break a fight. Uh -huh. Right, there was, yeah, there was a guy who was you know at the verge of stabbing. He, this guy is probably he's a heavyweight. For me, I my, my walk around weight is um, eight to three kg. That's just like um, like a welterweight. Right. I know if I cut if I cut weight, I could cut down probably to a lightweight, but I'm a walk around uh -huh, weight. Uh -huh. But then this guy is like 120 kg. That's that's a classic heavyweight. Yes, yes. And yes. Th th this guy was was you know attacking a guy that's like a bantam weight. I'm like, how would a heavyweight be attacking a bantam weight? And then you know, I just got got my right position in and you know secured a red naked choke. Then I put this guy <laughs> sleep. You know, I restrained him. You know, without being damaged. Do you see what I'm Fantastic. saying? So everything was fine. If you didn't, if you do you train jujitsu? Uh, just by watching MMA. I just okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't even so, train. <laughs> so imagine if you trained, you would even have a better choke. But you still went yeah, to yeah. A, you still went to a choke, um, yes. which is basically jujitsu. But mm -hmm. instead of going through, bah, 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 you would have left. Yeah. You. you could hurt your hand. You're breaking up a fight. Imagine you hurt your hand. So you went, you got the choke, broke up the yeah, fight. You go through the grappling and, you know, try to secure. Everybody gets home safe. But if you didn't go that route, you would have had to kick them and then it gets, mm -hmm. it gets ugly. Um, it gets ugly. And, and on, on the job, I'm trying to get in and get out. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to get in and get out. Granted, nobody should be that close where I should have to do jujitsu, depending on which artist I'm with or who's my client at the time. Um, but sometimes... Well, it's it's some sometimes people just want to walk around the mall and stuff, and it's it's situations that are out of my control. I just got to deal with it as they come. Mm, interesting stuff. So, what, what question would you like to leave for the next guest? All right, all right, all right. So let's see what question. But are, who, do we know if you're gonna? Is it a is it a fighter? Or it could be a random person, or I could just say any question in your. Uh, no. Oh, it's, it's not a fighter. Uh, she's a writer. She's a writer. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, she's a writer, Michelle. Okay. So <laughs> she's, she's an author. So all right. Oh, I'm excited for that one. Let's see. What what would I ask? What would I ask author? It's a good one, man. Because Mark Merck asked a great question. That was a great oh, one. Oh wow, interesting. It's, interesting. It's, 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 Merck asked a great question. Yeah. No, because he got to give you an answer. He didn't oh, study. Wow. He, and then it's simple, wow. but but a good so, question. Um so, so, so the, the next the next guess is Michelle, Michelle Dowd. Make sure that uh, hey, Mr. She, yeah, she she, she 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 was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Ah, you yeah. see, wow, yeah, she, but you've been doing, you, yeah, yeah, no, you've been you've been doing great things. Just the, the way I saw you have filming on here, like, like now you're gonna have her, like, bro, keep up the good work, bro, because that's what oh, people you. people don't. You're grinding right now. You're you're building content, like people don't see it, but people might not believe in you, but you believe in yourself. Mm. Um. And that's that's admirable. Like, 
like, like I said, like I've thought about starting a podcast, but then I'm like, oh, you know, I got to be really committed. So I'd rather put my time, you know what I'm saying? But you're there and you got great guests, man. So what would be the question for the writer? Um, damn, that's a good one, but I'm not going to lie. You got me a little bit stumped. I don't know what I would ask the writer. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a good liar. Anything, anything general, you know, in general. life, you know. All right. Um, because like I'm here choking, like, oh, when did you uh get into writing? Like, but I'm it's supposed to be a generic question that anybody can answer. Um ooh, man, I'm I'm not gonna lie, but I'm really hoping you come up with the questions, man. That's why I don't do podcasts. I'm I'm oh man, I'm embarrassed, bro. Um, what would, what, I don't even know what I don't even know what I would ask, man. I would I don't I don't even know what I would ask a writer. I apologize. I do apologize. A writer. Yeah, yeah, I don't, but you mentioned something already. Like, when did she get into writing? Should I? Yeah, you know, say that that because yeah, that's what I would come with. And what would be our advice for future writers? You know, I would try to give it like that. So anybody watching her is probably gonna be a writer. A, a lot of writers are people that, um, so they probably want to know. Something like that. Like for me, my advice would be, like I told you, time flies, don't waste it. I don't know what her advice would be, but might be study hard or, or whatnot. But I'm excited for that interview, man. I'm sorry I didn't have a better question. Uh, I do apologize. No problem. No, no problem. No problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you your shout out to her. Uh, so thank you very much for being thank on you, bro. for today. Uh, would you like to give a shout out to everybody before we leave? Man, first, I want to thank my dad and my brother, two Omars. I appreciate you. My team, uh, my sponsors, and my Hall of Fame coach, Juan Royal. We'll be back in the gym tomorrow. I'm hoping to be fighting in July. And shout out to Merck. Good luck to Merck. Good luck to Pink Panther, June 21st at the Hard Rock. And stay tuned, man. I appreciate you having me on here, man. God is good. And I'm grateful to be here. And I'm grateful for you to spend your time with me, man. Thank you, bro. God bless. Okay. Uh, thank you very much once again. Shout out to Merck. Shout out to everybody watching this at home. God bless you guys. It's been great having you on the port today. <laughs> thank you, brother. God bless, man.